Hey, what's up, guys? Talon back with the video. Uh, we're going to play a little Battlefield V. I wanted to show off um, an update to my uh, 4K 144Hz setup. Uh, a while back, I changed out my Acer monitor, which was a 4K 144Hz monitor. Um, uh, first generation, essentially. Uh, it re required to get 144Hz, you had to use uh, Chroma subsampling. In practicality and total use uh, I didn't notice that even on the desktop I know that it was kind of made a big deal that you, you had to use chroma subsampling so instead of running uh, 444 it would run uh, I think 422 and uh, that was just a display port limitation it didn't have uh, that monitor didn't have DSC or display stream compression like the newer monitors have uh, and definitely didn't use HDMI 2.1 so it kind of had that uh, limitation to it uh, my newer monitor, and again, I, I want to emphasize that I, in no way do I feel that that was limiting in any way to make gaming uh, any worse and as far as terms of picture quality. It basically, yeah, you couldn't notice it. That's that's my opinion. Uh, you couldn't notice any difference, uh, even on the desktop. You had to look at a very, um, like a picture that was made to see the difference, and then you had to open it within Paint with no window scaling involved. Uh, so it was ridiculous in order to see the difference. Like it was under a very strict viewing circumstance. Could you see it? And you know, in real world use, you're never going to see it. So it didn't make a difference. So if you have one of those, or if you're looking at one of those, maybe on the used market, I would have no hesitation in recommending those. Now the only difference between those panels, first generation, uh, and the newer ones that are coming out, the newer ones are mostly based on LG Nano IPS. Uh, so they're a faster IPS panel. They're the ones that are being advertised as one millisecond. In practicality, they're more probably around three to four milliseconds uh, because you're not going to use that highest level of overdrive to achieve that one millisecond. And it's not even all the time. It's It achieves it once in a while. But because it does that, you know, they can put one millisecond on the box. So it's kind of marketing. Um, so they... These are like really three to four. Those are advertised as four milliseconds. But again, best case scenario and the highest overdrive, which you aren't going to use. So those are probably in between six and seven milliseconds of response time. So uh, you're comparing about three to four to six to seven milliseconds of response time. Typically in my, the way I do things, I add three to four milliseconds to whatever's being advertised. Add three to four on top of that. And that's probably your true real gray to gray um, response time. That's not every monitor but that's a lot of monitors now my newer one is this it's the LG 27G on 950 Bravo um, the DP is just a uh, display port here uh, it does have a driver to install it within Windows so you can see that now they just released a firmware update uh, to increase this monitor to 4k 160 Hertz now this monitor can do 4k 144 and 160 with the OC so in the you go into the OSD, you can activate the overclock, brings it up to 4K 160, and that's without chroma subsampling because it required this monitor has a newer technology called DSC or display stream compression, so that over a single cable it can transfer 4K resolution, 160 hertz, HDR, and variable refresh rate all at the same time on a single cable with no with visually lossless compression that's where the DSC comes in it compresses the uh, the data that's being transferred over the cable and probably removes out fluff that you don't need um, that you can't see anyway again visually lossless and that's how you get all of that bandwidth uh, required to transfer this uh, because it does take a lot um, when I first got this run up and running uh, it wouldn't work with the LG cable included cable uh, I kind of had a feeling that it was that that was causing it. So I would, it would work on the desktop, but you'd launch a game. And if you're watching this video because you're having issues, uh, it would go to a black screen. And then the monitor would just like shut off. So I had to use one of my own cables that I had, which is... Uh, um, I'll leave a link in the description. I can't think of it right now. Um, but I think it's a Cable Matters. I think that's what it is. Cable Matters. It's a certified... Uh, Vesa certified for DSC and 8, uh, 8K 60 hertz um, with with DSC and all that stuff. So the cable is very, very thick. It's 28 uh, uh, wire gauging. Uh, the one that came in the box is really thin, pretty th flimsy type of cable. So I'm assuming that's probably why it didn't work. Um, 
who knows, but I believe it's LG to include kind of a crappy cable for an $800 monitor and then release a firmware that doesn't work with the stock cable at all. Um, but as soon as I swapped to that cable, I was pretty much smooth sailing. I have had a couple times where I launch games still and it'll go to a black screen, but then it seems like once I launch a game and it's working, then it works again for a long time. So it's very rare. It's something to do with the way it seems like just the way the monitor like I don't know hooks hooks up or something. Maybe it's a driver issue with Nvidia that will come out soon and we'll get it fixed. Maybe they're gonna have to release an updated revised firmware. I don't really know, but when it's working, it's working. No flickering, no nothing. Everything works beautifully, and I've never had any issues on the desktop. It's a very rare when you launch a game, it doesn't work. But for the most part, for me, once I switch the cable, I've had no issues uh, just a few times. So I do want to put that out there. I will leave a link in the description to the cable I'm, I talked, I'm talking about and the one that I purchased on Amazon. Um, it will fix your issues. I've tested two of them now, and both of them work perfectly. Um, I picked up a second one for a second monitor, which I'm going to go into in another video pretty soon. So, all that aside, 4K 160 hertz. We're going to play some Battlefield V. Um, these are my settings that I like to use. My over, uh, overlay here on the screen for you. I do apologize. That's a little small to read if you're on mobile. And yeah, we're just going to jump into a game. Um, yeah, I like this map. Let's go here. Um, I was going to play Battlefield 1, but it's pretty late where I'm at right now. It's like morning. Um, so, well, it was pretty dead servers. At least what I saw them serve. I could have messed with the filter and uh, gotten into a game. My other monitor that I've got, and I'm I'm probably going to do a, another video on it very soon. I just picked it up. I got the Amazon deal. It's the Alienware AW2721. It is a 1440p, 240 hertz, 1 millisecond, nano IPS as well. The panels look identical. It's a 27 inch. And when I, when I kind of color set these uh, monitors up, they looked like identical. It was unbelievable how close uh, they looked. So you guys can see right now we're getting. A, I've got it um, frame uncapped, so G-Sync is on. I'm outside the G-Sync range. I'm obviously not using G-Sync. I'm not frame capping. I'm not using Riva Tuner, um, anything like that. It is a full Conquest server, pretty full anyway, or close to it. Um, and then those are my settings in the pretty much ultra and high, and then the post process is set to medium. But everything else. I mean, it is just so buttery smooth. Like, it was already smooth at 140, but you just get that little bit, little bit higher bump. And uh, it hit 160. And also, it feels like they tuned the overdrive. The, over, the, the monitor feels even more responsive. So, like, it was responsive before, but it feels like it's... Like, it just feels like it is even more responsive. Get rid of that chat box um, than it was before. It's crazy. So the other monitor, like I was saying, it's 240 hertz IPS G-Sync Nano IPS uh, from LG. When I color calibrated them both by eye, I didn't use a hardware calibrator. Um, they look identical, identical. And even though there's, I mean, resolution aside, they're not identical that way. But color, clarity, the, the way whites look on it, everything looked pretty much identical. So a lot of guys over there. This thing is just so fluid. Now, I don't think I'm going to keep. I haven't decided. Like I said, I got the uh, the Alienware monitor. It just came out. Alienware is selling it. Dell is selling it. Whatever you want to say. Um, I don't have another med kit. Damn, how did I miss that guy? They're selling it on their website for $1,099, so I was eyeing it when they had it at $1,099. I was like, man, I always wanted a 240Hz IPS 1440p monitor. Now, I've been gaming at 4K for going on two years, so March will be two years, right? 4K 144Hz, I got my first one in March of 2019. And I, I, I really love gaming at 4K, I really do. I've kind of been on the forefront of playing at 4K, a lot of people probably aren't playing at this resolution and the high refresh rate. One, it's expensive. Two, you gotta basically keep up the rig. I had a 2080 at the time, I have a 3080. 
I could have a 3090, but the performance difference is so small for the dollars. Doesn't make sense to me, so I'm probably going to avoid the 3090. Um, but I just really enjoyed playing at this resolution, and once you see it, like, I put them, I put them side by side. There's a pretty large difference in the clarity of the image quality. Not that 1440p is bad and that I wouldn't get used to that again and, and have a wonderful experience. I just feel like I don't feel the 240 from the 160 now is that big of a difference to maybe to warrant me keeping both and I can't game on both at the same time. My secondary monitor's primary purpose that I've had is basically just for viewing content while I'm gaming Discord, having uh, Spotify, something like that on the on the side, or from reading, you know, Reddit on one screen, and then I'm watching, you know, Netflix or YouTube or something on another screen, kind of listening to it in the background. I like to um, multitask, kind of weird like that, right? Um, so I I had a 1080p 144Hz IPS panel in the vertical for that on my desk. Now I have both of these monitors running. And I, I paid 7.33 for it. Amazon had a crazy deal, and I, I'm pretty sure it was a pricing error, which is another reason I'm sort of feeling like keeping the monitor because Dell is selling it for 1,099. They haven't changed their price. They haven't budged on it. Um, and then I got it for 7.33, and then I had a bunch of Amazon Prime rewards, so I got out the door at 617 dollars after tax and shipping. Uh, obviously, with free Prime shipping, but after tax. I was out the door, so I got about about half the price uh, when everything was all said and done. I paid about half of what I would have paid if I had purchased it um, direct from Dell.com. So I'm kind of leaning towards keeping it. I, again, I'll do a review on it. I just, I thought 240 hertz gaming would be a bigger difference than it is, but when you compare 240 hertz 1440p to 4K 160. The difference in the smoothness is like, as great as that. There's another guy here. As great as I like thought it was gonna be. I guess like for me, I mean, I'm already getting 160. Kind of keeping up. You watch the FPS up here. It's it's getting pretty close to that. So I'm definitely there as far as being able to drive that resolution. I'm playing Battlefield V, so it's a pretty demanding title. Yeah, bro, what did I spawn into? Did not see, it's like way too zoomed in with that. One more. What are you doing? No! <laughs> you trying to plunge a toilet? We are losing control of objective ah, it's alright. I'm surrounded there. Um, I just thought it would be a bigger difference. Let's wrap it up. 164K is so close. I mean, you're you're going from 160 to 240. It's 80 hertz. It's not like going from 60 to 144. Your first, you know, the first time you went to 144, you're getting over, you know, over double. The uh, the refresh rate, right? If you go from one, you know, it's almost triple. If you go from 60 to 160, right? It's getting close. Not quite triple, but if you go from 160 to um, 240, it's not even double. So. Yeah, we took care of him. Objective even if it cost our life. So it's not even double, so... I think that's why the the difference just isn't there. And maybe there's diminishing returns as you kind of keep going up and up and up. I think I think maybe if it had been at 360 hertz, it'd be a huge difference. But then you gotta drive 1440p at 360. And bad with the only 360 out right now is... No are those uh, two... Uh, the, I think there's one from... Well, I guess there's a few. There's a Dell one, there's an Acer one, there's a MSI one, there's a Asus one, but yeah, the only ones that are on the market, I believe, are the Dell and the, uh, 
Ah, uh, Zeus. I don't think Acer and MSI have got their models out yet. Who oh, is that guy? I'm coming, buddy. Still, oh, he's dead. Sorry. Couldn't get to him. That guy tried to get you. Just saved your life. Just saved your life. We have secure control of Objective Charlie. Be sure we keep it. Run. Run faster. Sixty is like unbelievable. How fast this feels! It feels like a natural. How quick it, it feels like it's moving. You showed me your head. I'll shoot it. It's just so much easier to track your enemy. Uh, obviously, the T forty was even easier to track. It's extremely. Uh, easy to track enemies. So I'm not going to knock at anybody out there. If you've got the 1440p, 240, that's great. It's awesome. Don't get me wrong. I uh, definitely can see the. I would definitely have a slight competitive advantage with it. But I also feel I have a slight competitive advantage where I'm currently playing at 4K and 160 with the clarity, being able to see. There's That's the drawback for me is that in certain games where I feel like you're looking farther into the distance um, the 1440p is more washed out it doesn't have it doesn't maintain that pixel clarity at, at, at distance to kind of pick your enemies quite as easily so that's where it kind of falls back and then you kind of lose that immersion like it just it just doesn't look quite as good as should have ADS to him he's using the same gun he's smart Ultimately, I think I'm going to probably keep both, and then I'll probably kind of go back and forth as to, you know, what I like to play at, just depending on the title. It kind of seems like a bit of a waste, I mean, to have both these, like, ridiculous gaming monitors. Especially because this one, it feels like it's more of the jack-of-all-trades. And I'm so happy with this 160. I mean, it's nuts. Now, the, the 1440p from Alienware has real G-Sync, and I can just there's something about real G-Sync. My old monitors all had it. My Dell 1440p that I had before, and then my Acer with the 4K 144Hz was also a real G-Sync monitor. It's something about it just feels better. Just the way I think it's the variable overdrive, and again, like. Free sync is there, it's free for a reason, right? The adaptive sync just is not as good. It's cheaper. It doesn't require the hardware, and it's. I don't care what anybody tries to convince me of. It is not as good. It's close. Just not quite as good. I guess where it handles it better for me is the low low FPS range. Right, right now where I'm getting high FPS, it doesn't matter. But as you start to get really low in that FPS range, if you're playing something that's really, really demanding, and say you're only getting 70, 80 frames a second, it doesn't feel quite as smooth on this as opposed to what uh, it felt like on a real G-Sync monitor. You go play, you know, Flight Sim or something like that. The real G-Sync is so much smooth. That's ridiculous, right? He threw it. It left his hand and all of a sudden it lost momentum. God, this, this monitor is nuts. It's so damn beautiful to game on. I don't care if we're losing. I'm having a blast and I'm killing a bunch of people. Good try harder play more of a team. It's crazy just how fast it snaps. It's nuts. 
And I don't even have it on the highest overdrive. There is a higher overdrive level, but again, it's not something I would probably want to use like all the time. It is faster, but it it doesn't feel necessary. This is already so fast, and there's no image distortion. You don't get any overdrive or any um, overshoot in the pixel. So if I go, let's see if I can you adjust it. So there's normal, fast, and faster. We're going to try faster. That's the highest you can go to. Whoa. Yeah, so this is the faster setting. It's it's usable. So I would say that like this is more used. I've seen it so bad in some games. There's just a little bit of pixel overshoot there. Didn't help me there. Maybe I don't need to use it. Um... I would say that, yeah, like, it feels, okay, I think it's dependent on your FPS, but it feels like it's more usable on this monitor than I've had. I've had some really nasty overshoot on the highest overdrives, where it just, it's silly, You're, you wouldn't want to use it. Yeah, I can even notice it when I'm just kind of moving around. There's another guy over here. Guys, I couldn't even see him. It kind of, I was getting, I was definitely getting that pixel overshoot. I don't like that. We're gonna change that back. Alright. Alright, guys. I'll tell you what, I'm going to end this video here. And then I'm gonna kind of pick up really quick on my secondary monitor that I have sitting right next to me. They're both plugged in. And uh, I'll s kind of talk about that one and see which one I like more. Alright, we'll end it here. We'll catch you in the next video.